In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we honor and pray to the Holy Innocents. These were the little children who were boys two years old and younger, who were massacred by the order of Herod because he was so angry that the three kings who came through Jerusalem, <clears throat> that they did not go back and tell Herod where they found the king. The king prophesied by all the prophets. So the angel told the three kings, go back another way. And these three saints went back to their countries. Later the apostles went to those countries and they became Catholic. They were all had their kingdoms baptized. And the three kings' skulls, they are venerated saints, Saint um, Melchior, Caspar, and Balthazar. And their bones are kept, you can see their skulls crowned with crowns, in the Cologne Cathedral in Germany. So Herod was furious, and Herod let loose what many tyrants down history will do, um, and massacre the little boys. And not just in Bethlehem, but the whole region around there. So that was prophesied by Jeremiah 600 years before that the, the weeping and crying of the mothers would be heard throughout the streets and they could not be consoled because their boys are no more. So the angel told St. Joseph before the massacre, take the child and flee to Egypt. St. Joseph immediately obeyed and took the Blessed Mother and the donkey and they fled to Egypt which was at least six, seven hundred mile journey through the desert, through the cold nights in the desert, through uh, threats of bandits and so forth. There's a tradition that is said that, I'm sure all of you know it, that on the way they were surrounded by bandits and they had mercy on them because it was a young mother and she was very beautiful. Our Lady was stunningly beautiful. And uh, so they, they took them in and fed them. And the mother of the, one of the bandits, the thieves, she was about, she had a big hot bath ready to bathe her baby. And the baby had leprosy. So she said, well, why don't you bathe your baby first? And because the water's clean and I, I don't want to infect your baby with the leprosy. So the Virgin Mary bathed the child Jesus covered with, sand and, and, and probably from the cold and long cold nights and long trip <clears throat> she bathed him and of course whatever Christ touches is sanctified so when she dried the baby Jesus the mother of the thief lowered her baby with leprosy and instantly the baby was cured so later that thief would grow up to be a thief and he would be his name was Dismas and he will die on the right side of Christ, and heaven would be open to him. Paradise would be open to him. So Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the Holy Family, fled to Egypt. Now what happened in Egypt? There, there's actually some maps you can find on where the Holy Family actually traveled. They didn't stay too long in one place. But St. Joseph had to manage to make money, <clears throat> support the family, and he didn't speak hieroglyphics. So fathers who struggle to support their family, who struggle to try to keep a job, who struggle, St. Joseph knows all about this. And those shrines are still kept in Egypt. Uh, myself, I've never been there, but I've met many Egyptians, in the airport especially, who are Catholic, and they'd say the shrines are there. They have fireplaces where the Holy Family cook their meals in these little houses or hotels and they're still kept the way they were and they're venerated as sacred relics because the Holy Family passed through there. So that, that's all through Egypt, different shrines. <clears throat> it's also uh, St. John Chrysostom mentions how St. Joseph holding the child Jesus as they entered into some of the big cities of Egypt and they had huge statues of the cats and the pharaohs and the false gods of the Egyptians. 
And as Christ the King entered into the city as a child in the arms of Our Lady, or St. Joseph, as they passed into the city walls, the, the statues of these devils, because the gods of the Gentiles are devils, says the Holy Ghost, they just crumbled to dust. And uh, imagine the scene, the Holy Family quietly, you know, unassumingly walking through the city, and they, right as they pass, huge statues collapsing. And nobody knows what's going on. And so Egypt <clears throat> would be blessed Egypt will be blessed by the presence of Christ. Egypt that drove out the Israelites, that was struck with the plagues of darkness, received the light of the darkness, Christ himself. Egypt that saw its um, rivers turn to blood as one of the plagues. Egypt will receive the king of kings because to flee the rivers of blood that would flow in Bethlehem by the massacre of the innocents. Egypt, which would be the land struck with plagues, and, uh, and one of the plagues was the killing of the firstborn. Egypt would be later blessed to receive the firstborn of the Father from all eternity, the living God, and the firstborn of the Virgin Mary. So Egypt would be blessed after so many years of its of its punishment, and Egypt would also <clears throat> give rise to the first martyrs. Many of the first martyrs shed their blood in Egypt for the Catholic faith. And it would also be the seedbed of the great monastics, St. Pacomius, who used to pass the Nile River on the backs of the crocodiles, and St. Anthony of the Desert, and St. Paul the Hermit, They all and St. Athanasius, he was from Egypt, that was northern Egypt. So, some of the great armies of monks, and in, in the Tibetan region, which is southern, uh, in kind of the middle on the North Nile River, in the Tibetan region there were up to 3,000 monks. And in some areas there were whole families that moved there to live as monks. The men would live on one side of the river, the ladies lived on the other side, and sometimes girls and boys also. And it was recorded that visitors, when they visited that region of the Nile River, when they heard all these monks chanting the divine office, they say they would say, this is paradise. This is paradise. So Egypt would be blessed to receive the divine Savior and uh, the cruel Herod who shed the blood of these great innocents. So let's pray to them. Pray to these holy innocents. They shed their blood for Christ's sake. <clears throat> and as the, as the collect of the Mass said, says here today, they profess the Catholic faith, non loquendo sed moriendo, not by speaking the Catholic faith, but by dying they profess the Catholic faith. And that's what's called, as the Catholic Church has always taught, the baptism of blood. The baptism of blood, how many martyrs and soldiers who witness, for example, St. Agnes or St. Lucy being martyred, moved by grace, profess themselves to be Catholic, instantly they're struck dead, and the Church always honors them as martyrs and saints, because they were baptized in blood. And had they lived, of course, they would need to be baptized by water, because only baptism of water gives them character on the soul. Baptism of blood and baptism of repentance or desire, they do not give the character on the soul, but they can give the state of grace. And that's why the church acknowledges many saints that were only baptized by blood and, and repentance slash desire. Non loquendo sed moriendo. Not by speaking, but by shedding their blood, they profess the Catholic faith. So our times are kind of similar today. Many people don't want to hear the truth. They block their ears. And so we, we have to profess the faith, maybe not always with words. Not always with words, because people's hearts are hardened, and their heads are full of liberalism. <clears throat> but moriendo, by dying, we must profess the faith. And we die by 
the persecution of the of this age, the persecution of professing the Catholic faith by our life. Just just one example: parents taking the children God sends. You'll be persecuted by nurses, doctors, neighbors, friends, family. Oh, why are you having your third? Why are you having a fifth? Tenth? Are you insane? Fifteenth? You're crazy. That is a real persecution. And how many mothers have to endure this silent persecution, shopping with eight, nine, ten children behind her? And it's a real moriendo. It's a real certain death. And how many fathers of families who at work, they have to put up with blasphemies and the, their co-workers boasting about their cheating on their wives and and horrible stories that totally break God's laws. <clears throat> and they, these men have to live through this. It's a certain dying. It's a certain dying that we all are asked to profess the faith today by, in a way, dying. Because Catholic tradition <laughs> is not honored today. Pope Francis mocks it. He mocks the rosary. The modernist bishops hate the tradition. The cardinals in Rome, they hate tradition. They hate it. And this is what Bishop Fillet, I don't know why he's so naive to this. He, he said this August, it's not a trap. This personal prelature is not a trap. It cannot be a trap. It's not a trap. He says it three times. While Archbishop Lefebvre said, it is a trap. Every maneuver they make is to trap Catholic tradition and crush it. So we can't be fooled by these, these men. Unless we profess the full integral Catholic faith, they, they can't be trusted. And so, by dying, we must profess the faith. By dying, that is the daily life in this bad apostate world. And that goes for the girls wearing dresses. How often they're, they're mocked for just dressing as every woman has dressed for centuries and centuries and centuries. And uh, wearing the scapular can be a cause of dying. And making the sign of the cross in public restaurants. Uh, the mockery from other people. So this is the kind of death we have to endure. And it's a happy death. And we should be happy to endure mockery and persecution and ridicule from a world that's going to be severely judged by Christ the King. So happy you, dear faithful, if we remain faithful. Blessed are you who honor my, me and my Father before men, because then I will honor you before my Father and before all the angels and saints. And that's the real crowd to please. That's the real, that's what really matters, is to please Christ and the angels. Let's ask the Mother of God for this great spirit of martyrdom that these children already had. Non doquendo sin moriendo. Not by professing with their lips, but by dying daily. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen.